Hello, Rory here and welcome to Lame Heart. If you're new here, then an extra special welcome goes out to you. Lame Heart is where you'll find all kinds of music talk, whether it's chats with your favorite chart-topping artists or album reviews or a bunch of other fun bits. You will get it all here. And today, I'm absolutely delighted because I am welcoming Astrid S onto the podcast. So she is an absolute force. She's Norwegian. And just like some of the achievements she has are incredible. She has 5 billion streams across all her credits, sold out world tours, and she has collabed with the likes of Shawn Mendes, Noted, JP Cooper, among others. And so she has been on my hit list to get an interview with for a number of years at this point. And so I'm so glad that this episode has now happened and that it's out now. She has so much amazing pop music. Her debut album, Leave It Beautiful, which came out in 2020, is the best debut album I have ever heard, especially within the pop genre. It is an incredible body of work. The songs are so well done. And now, all this time later, she has her second album, Joyride, which is out now on streaming and vinyl. And this one takes more of an organic, analogue approach to the sonics of it. And lyrically, there's kind of a through line of cars, as you can tell from the title and when you see the cover. So me and Astrid sat down and we chatted all about it. We covered a lot of ground. She taught me some Norwegian. She talked to me about getting her driving license because I'm also trying to get my driving license at the moment. So we were talking about the trials and tribulations of trying to be a qualified driver. And of course, we dug into the new album, Joyride, and it was just a really lovely chat. So if you enjoy what you are hearing, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to Lame Heart on the platform you're listening to this on, and if you gave it a nice review or a nice rating. So let's dig into it. Here is Astrid S on Lame Heart. Hey, I'm Baby Queen. Hi, I'm Katie Beza. Hey, this is Ram McMullen. Hi guys, Lara here. Hey, I'm Jim from Koala. Hello, this is Dagny. And you are listening to Lame Heart. And you're listening to Lame Heart. And you're listening to Lame Heart. It's out now. I really hope you enjoy it. So enjoy. It's a big day on Lame Heart with a brand new album. Joining from, I'm, I'm guessing you're in Norway right now because she yes. is Norwegian. It's Astrid S. Hello. Hello. Great to have you on. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. It's uh, summer in Oslo now, which is rare in May, but mm. I have to show you the weather. Wow. Yeah. It's That's... usually gray at this time of year. And the, it, the green hasn't sprung yet. I don't know how you say that in English, but... <laughs> that, that makes sense. Yeah, but everyone's just very happy and uh, um, kind of like, I feel like everyone's kind of jogging around and just having beers out, outdoors. Um, so I'm feeling great. That's wonderful. It's, well, yeah. it's quite grey today, but last weekend it was like summery in Dublin and everyone was in a great mood and the place just shines i've always said that may is a good month in dublin i don't know what it's like in oslo but it's like just before it's getting too hot (laughs) yeah same yeah it's just perfect and we have lots of music to talk about that you're going to be bringing and delivering to us this summer and i'm just delighted to be talking to you about it because i've been a listener of your music for a long time and lots of questions that i want to ask of course um but yeah, there's just been so much over the years. There's just the headlines here, over 5 billion streams with the B. There's been collabs <laughs> with Shawn Mendes and Noted. I want to say, is Noted? Am I pronouncing that right? Or is I'm it like sure, N-O-T-D? <laughs> I think I saw someone say Noted once, because I was say just noted. saying N-O-T. Okay, so there's yeah. them and J.P. Cooper as well. There's sold out tours across the world. And we have a brand new album, Joyride. Yes which is finally out and to try and welcome you in on this because lame heart is irish and it means jump around that's the name of the podcast i tried to i'm going to embarrass myself a lot here but i'm going to try a little bit of norwegian that i tried to learn but just to welcome you in uh really nervous but it's hi that's a rory paul lame heart of welcome to the podcast in my hennis album 
Astra S. That was great. Thank you. That was amazing. It sounded like you um, you spoke kind of Norwegian with a German accent, which was interesting. <laughs> okay, I have no German at all. If anything, no, no. I, if anything, I'd say I have more Norwegian than German, and I don't speak Norwegian. Do you have uh, is it called relatives in uh, Norway? No, but I listen to a lot of Norwegian artists, so I try to pick up on words here and there. Um, but actually, a story I do tell my friends all the time, and it's kind of embarrassing, is last year I was at an award show here uh, in Dublin. It's like the Irish equivalent of like the Brits, or like our, our national music prize. And yeah. one artist came up to me, I think he was with his like girlfriend or something. He was like, oh, here, can you take a picture of us? And I was like, yeah, no worries. I think it was her phone, he gave it to me. But I had been doing quite a lot of drinking and I opened up the phone and in all the words on the cameras looked like Norwegian. So I was like, oh, you speak, are you Norwegian? And I, I think she said yes. And then I proceeded to speak what I thought was Norwegian to her. Um, I have no idea if what I did makes sense, but I just took the picture and off she went. And ah. that's my little funny story from the night. Wow. So what was her reaction to what you said? Not going to lie, I'd had... Did she look enough... abused? <laughs> she might have been, because it's not a language that many Irish people would know. Like, no. you know, most people who learn Norwegian in school here probably have like a Norwegian parent. Um like there'd be a lot more French and German and Spanish, but I th I think she was surprised, but I don't know if I said anything correct or if anything made sense, <laughs> but it's just a, a fun little memory because I always tell people this and then they always come back with, oh, oh, so you speak Norwegian to my friends who've never heard me speak Norwegian ever. I'm like, no, I don't, but I'm trying. You should download, is it called the Duolingo? The app? Yeah, possibly learn Norwegian it's such a cool party trick because like you said I think a lot of people learn French or Italian or Spanish it would make it very cool if you could speak Norwegian okay do you have any do you have any phrases or words you want to you want to teach me maybe um I was talking to my one of my my cousin she actually has a um, German girlfriend and I was talking to her about uh, Norwegian sayings and um, there's one which is Sheppa i julen Sheppa i julen Yeah, a bit more ah, Sheppa i julen Sheppa i Yeah <laughs> What does that mean? It means that uh, that's what I found it a bit hard to explain but it kind of means if um, there's a seppa. It's kind of uh, directly translated. It's like if you get a stick in your bicycle wheel, so you kind of fall off. So if you if you um, if something gets in the way of something, like uh, um, I was supposed to go to France, but um, the flight got cancelled. That's kind of like a that's like a stick in the wheel. It makes no sense, but <laughs> yeah, we would say spanner in the works. And what spanner in the work? In the works. Um, spanner. How do I describe what a spanner is? It's like that metal thing they use to tighten the like screws on your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a big tool, and it's like so someone has thrown a spanner into what you were trying to work on. It's because I suppose it's big, it's heavy, it'll damage whatever is yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. That's that's our version of seppa iura. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for the lesson. Um, I wasn't expecting to get educated on the language as well as the music, but of course, we're going to discuss the music. And we will, of course, be talking about uh, Joyride, the new album. I have to talk about Leave It Beautiful as well, because as a like pop music person, always keeping an eye on what the pop music scene is like, what albums are coming out. And especially now that we've had like three and a half years to listen to Leave It Beautiful, I think I can confidently say not just saying this because you're hearing now, it's the best debut album I've ever heard. Oh, wow. Like, it's just beautifully cohesive and tells a great story. And the songs are just very well written and produced. And it really looks like you spent your time in the studio, you know? 
Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I feel like uh, that's a, it's a big statement saying that's. I feel like Olivia Rodrigo Sour is like my one of my favorite debut albums of all time. Um, but yeah, I spend uh, a lot of time in the studio with uh, Jack and Coke, which is a, a producer duo from Stockholm. Mm-hmm. Um, and before making that album, I was used to doing more of the speed dating. So most of the music I've put out until then is like with all different producers. And then I figured when I was making my first album that I wanted to have a team to work with just to kind of get to know them better and for them to get to know me and then be in a safe space where I can kind of, I guess, like develop as a songwriter. Um, So that was really fun. Thank you for saying that. Absolutely. And are there any, now that we've had some sort of time to listen to it, do do you have any like, I suppose, do you have any favorite songs now that it's been out for so long? Because since day one, I've been a Can't Forget Stan. And then I also listen to AirPods quite a lot. Mm. Um, And then I've been listening to it a lot in the lead up to this chat as both research, but also just because I enjoy it. Um, And trying to think what else. Like, I loved the performance of AirPods as well. The one that was like done in COVID because... As yeah. someone who like loves video production as well, I love like the opening shot, which is like behind the scenes in the room and then it cuts to you. And I keep trying to show people like how good the color grade is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the like That's purple like... purple slash pink light on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think my favorite song on the album before it was released was, um, and after, uh, is um, It's Okay If You Forget Me. Mm. And um, uh, because I released the album right when the like the same year the pandemic happened and then i didn't get to tour it um but then we did summer festivals in 2022 and it was just insane seeing how many people knew the song and sang it back so it's um i also feel like a lot of my not a lot of my friends but a few of my friends have told me about how they have a few guy friends that are a bit embarrassed but they'll like eventually say i actually really love it's okay if you forget me by astrid i'll listen to it when i'm alone but no one knows which is kind of cute i think Mm. Um, i think it's a perspective that you don't hear that much in how you're saying it actually hurts that it doesn't hurt yeah and you expect to feel really sad but you don't yeah it's so strange also how i remember writing it and i was kind of feeling a bit like I felt a bit stupid for feeling that way about a breakup and I tried to explain it to um, Jack and Coke who was in the studio and um, I was like I've never heard of anyone feeling like this after a breakup Uh, and I thought I was the only one but I feel like after releasing it um, it seems like a lot of people can relate to that particular feeling after a breakup where you're kind of confused about not feeling more hurt in a way, but it is, it, it is a strange feeling. I haven't had it since, um, but I'm glad that it connected with people. For sure. And seeing as you were mentioning touring there, I don't know how much of the tour budget had to be spent on this, but whatever amount you spent on getting a saxophone person player to come up for dance, 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 I have to say it was totally totally worth it yeah <laughs> it's actually my keyboardist the uh, on this he, oh, okay uh, he's played in the band for uh since i think 2016 um and he used to be a saxophonist so he would like play at parties and uh, different events um and i i had to like talk him a bit into it to actually want to bring out the saxophone and I think sometimes he pretends to not really like enjoy it but I feel like looking at him playing the saxophone when we do the festival sets um I feel like that's what he loves the most because he also goes down on both of his knees and there's a wind machine even though he's bald so (laughs) but you can see his shirt like kind of what do you call it in English like starts to flapper in the wind sometimes he wears like an an, um, open buttoned shirt and it'll like look like a superhero cape but um, he absolutely crushed it yeah yeah yeah. he's amazing he doesn't need to worry about not enjoying it because it looked amazing from 
the videos that I saw online. And since Leave It Beautiful, we've had a number of bangers in between that and Joyride. One that I did want to bring up um, is that about, how long ago was it? I think it would have been shortly after you both released albums. Um, Dagny was on Lameheart, your friend Dagny. And no. yeah, and she, I'm trying to remember, was this while we were recording or not? But basically she spoke very highly of you while she was on. And oh. I think I got the idea that I was like, oh, maybe they're working together. And then it took almost like a year before Pretty came along, storming in to save pop music in the middle of December of 2021. And, you know, that's also lived a life now because it's had two years um, of listening. And you performed it together at her Spectrum uh, Arena show in Oslo before Christmas. So um, how has that song been in kind of the life that it's lived up to now? Uh, It was quite the... Like it was a different process making it and finishing it because we had me and Dagny had a couple of days in the studio um, with Rat City that she's worked with a bunch. Um, and I think I can only speak for myself, but I was a bit nervous working with her because I'm such a huge fan. Uh, so we ended up just making a bunch of ideas. We probably had like 10 sketches over two days and no like full length song. Uh, but then suddenly this Netflix movie wanted to release. They heard one of the sketches and then uh, they wanted it in, in their movie. So we went back to finish it. Um, and it was kind of cool to like work on a song knowing this will be released. Because um, usually you work on a song and then you don't know if it's going to be released ever. Um, but um, no, I'm actually a bit surprised surprised I'm always surprised when when my music travels uh but I love that song and I love Dagny so I hope that we get to do more together well we're here to listen to it and to love it when that day comes and now we have brand new album it's been three and a half years since the first one but it also feels like this has come so fast Joyride is the new album out now I've been absolutely loving it there's a bunch of great songs on it both released already and that the listeners got to get on release day um and it's all car themed and i just love car references in pop music um it's just such a great sort of theme that people like to draw into songs but people don't often do it to this extent where it's like the name of the album and the cover is a car and there's lots of lyrical things um, and it's something that your one of your former collaborators, uh, Charlie XEX, does quite a lot with songs like Vroom Vroom, Speed yeah. Drive, album called Crash. Um, and even the last guest who was on Lameheart a few weeks ago, Fred Roberts, the first time we met, we were talking about his first music video. And I was like, why did you put a car in it? Was yeah. what you're driving a car in it? Are you driving away from something? Are you driving to something? But what led to cars i suppose defining the name of the album the cover and being a through line both lyrically um in the songs and in the general campaign it's because i before i started writing the album i was thinking about um kind of what um music experiences i've had growing up that's made me love music so much uh, and I kept coming back to me and my dad being in the car on road trips together and listening to music. Uh, and that's how I would discover music. And I have some of my best memories from my childhood in the car with my dad. Um, so I kind of knew from early on that I wanted it to be a, a road trip album. And I had the title Joyride. Um, and I kind of wanted it to just be a homage to me and my dad in the car and being on road trips and listening to music and um uh i think or i don't think i know <laughs> i i drew a lot of inspiration from sonically from all the music i grew up listening to um so yeah i just think i've had like uh i've envisioned me and my dad in the car the whole time uh, riding it um so i think that's why there's a lot of cars and car metaphors in the lyrics it's great and Definitely from listening to it, I can hear it working well on a road trip. I haven't tested it out yet because I still can't drive. Um, 
I'm trying to get that done as soon as possible. How is your driving going? I I'm trying to to get my license in June. The plan was to get it um, on the release date of the album, but I've been a bit optimistic. Uh, I realized today, so we actually just postponed the the test because uh, we need some more time. <laughs> my plan was to get mine in April, but um, guess who guess who failed the test? So <laughs> I'm actually also planning, hopefully by June. Yeah, like the actual um, not. Or do you have a theoretical test? Because we have that in Norway, you have to like do. A, yeah. Okay. Which test did you do? Oh, I yeah, I did the theory a while ago. This was the actual okay. driving test. Why did you fail? Oh. Uh, from your mistakes. <laughs> well, oh. do you know what's funny is I've actually there's a lot of people in my life that are really invested in this and are really like hyping me up for it, and they're like, "Tell us when you have the test and tell us how everything's going." And I told no one that I was doing the test and I told no one that I had failed either. So I think when this episode comes out, that's actually going to be how most people find out that I've already tried the test and yeah. failed. Um, but um, there was one point, I don't know, like maybe there's differences between what's on the test in Norway and in Ireland, but I was going into a quiet road where do you have to do a reverse around a corner? I have no idea yet but hopefully not. <laughs> okay, well, we do. And uh, the tester asked me to pull over to the side and I was like, he's about to ask me to do the reverse around the corner. But I pulled in um, a little bit too early and he just kind of goes, oh, sorry, could you just go a bit further up and then pull in? And because I was stopped for like less than five seconds and didn't check my like blind spot over my shoulder, that was the one thing that, failed so yeah and judging by what the like driving test people in ireland say i should hopefully have another test in june so we're in this together okay let's see who gets it first oh my god wait do you already have a date no okay so it's like it's gonna be you but do you have a date no but that was the end of april that was three weeks ago and they say it's about six to eight weeks before they can let you book another test. So I don't know whether that means I'll have the test in six to eight weeks or if in six to eight weeks I have the chance to book a test in like another month. Okay, so maybe I have a chance of beating you. Pro you probably do. Yeah. But are you, do you feel ready for it? Yeah, I'm very ready to get my driver's license. I've been thinking about it for... Probably since I was 18, but especially the past year because of the album. Um, and I'm just really excited to be in a car alone or like a car that's driving alone. So I've never had that experience in my life. So that's exciting. That's something I never thought of, actually. I've thought of how nice it'll be to like give my friends a ride somewhere because they've given me so many like lifts yeah. places. Um, I'm thinking of if I have to travel across the country, I don't have to like get a bus into Dublin city to then get another bus across the country and then get another local bus somewhere else. I'll be able to just drop. God, this is, this yeah. is just all, this is a manifestation episode. This isn't actually a chat about an album, <laughs> um, but it has resulted all this driving talk in all the songs. And we've had a number of singles so far. Uh, one that is fairly recent and that I have taken as a personal favorite is hot fever dream because I think you timed the release so well because it's so summery and the guitar vibe about having a crush. Um, about two years ago, um, Tuva Sterka was on and so I was talking to her about her song. Do you know her song, Cool Me I Down? Love... Yeah. I was like, it kind of gives me the same kind of vibe of just like a really guitar driven crush song being released like at the start of summer when you can just like taste the sunshine and it just makes you feel so good. That's what I got from Hot Fever Dream. That's amazing. That's exactly what I wanted people to get from it. <laughs> yeah, and it seems to be the one that like any any of the songs from the album already released that I've kind of played to a few friends. I was like, oh yeah, there's, what do we have so far? We had two hands first to go, oh Emma, Hot Fever Dream. Hot Fever Dream has been like the one that people enjoy a lot <laughs> from my little tests. <laughs> That song wasn't supposed to be a single, and we decided, I think, um, late March, we were like, let's try to get this in as a single. 
in between OMA and then the album release. So um, that was probably a good decision then. Definitely. And are you going to be playing it when like you have your driving license? For sure. Yeah, yeah. That's the first song I'm going to play. Windows down. Like I can see the sunglasses and the hats and yeah. the air flowing in and you're taking off to the beach for the day yeah. and you've got a hot fever dream on. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And I love the title track, Joyride, as well, because that inspired the whole thing. Was this the the first song that you wrote that kind of brought us the rest of the album? Because, you know, it's it's dangerous, it's turbulent, but the story is kind of knowing something isn't right or healthy, but kind of going for it anyway. Did Was this like the first song you wrote that you thought, I think this should be the album? Uh, yeah, I think that, yeah, that was the first song I wrote. Yeah. Um, but I also, but I think, yeah, there's a song on the album called Bloodline. That one I wrote mm -hmm. a long time ago. And finally, I could kind of find a home for it. But um, yeah, I think Joyride was actually the first song we wrote for the album. Um, yeah, that's crazy to think about. Yeah. What about it made you want to kind of base the album on it then? Besides the sort of car rides with your dad? I think because I knew like the concept, I wanted it to be a road trip thing and then um, have a lot of car references visually and also lyrically. I just felt like Joyride would be the perfect title because um, it's such a, I feel like in, uh, the, that saying or like the, the meaning behind it, it's it's so easy to um, use it as a metaphor for like a relationship like we did in the song. Um, and it's also kind of a great motto to have. Um, I think because there's another Norwegian saying, <laughs> which is like, don't, um how do i say it in english it's it's kind of about how you shouldn't uh worry about the future or like the worst case scenarios just like enjoy it until the worst case scenario happens and then you can feel sad about it um which okay. is, I, I feel like that's kind of what the joyride song is saying um how you can enjoy the relationship for as long as it lasts and whenever the heartbreak hits um you can feel sad about it then uh in a way for sure. And the heartbreak kind of kicks in then on the last song, Howdy. Um, cause I love yeah. the way, I love the way that the title is worked into like the chorus, um, on it, but it's in contrast with Leave It Beautiful, like the title track at the end of the album, it, you know, Leave It Beautiful is kind of, yes, it's sad, but it's kind of doing the right thing because, you know, it's best for the future. And I mean, as you, wrote and sang yourself you know let's let it go and leave it beautiful before it gets mad this yeah. one has more of a sad ending on howdy there's a lot of questions to be answered yeah yeah it's kind of the car crash uh, at the end of the song oh never thought of that brilliant um yeah it definitely uh, there's a lot of questions uh in the song um but that's also i feel like with that song it's it's kind of that's like another experience of uh, a breakup and i feel like sometimes when you um end the relationship uh, i feel like that song kind of um talks about how you ended something and then suddenly uh you maybe realize that ending it was kind of a way to i don't know if this is making any sense but but I love that song. I think it's, um, I think a lot of, I think after every breakup I've had, there's always so many questions. And usually I'm really good at just letting it go and thinking I'm never gonna get the answers and that's okay. But, um, but sometimes it can still sting a little bit. Definitely. And you're taking all these songs out on the road, a load of festivals this summer. And I think now that we're a few summers post COVID, are you, you know, we have to get back into the swing of things, but you're so much more ready for it now. Between like the live audience and the ones who will listen at home, what do you kind of hope that people will take away from all these songs and this album? Besides getting their driving license. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think, 
For, I'm really excited to play it live first and foremost because there's it's a way more like organic sound for me than than Leave It Beautiful, which is more electronic Scandi pop. Um, but I hope that I feel like some of the songs like Two Hands and Hot Fever Dream they're a bit more cheeky and that people hopefully feel inspired to just flirt a little bit more this summer and find their summer fling. Um, and then I just also love, from my experience, like listening to music in the car, if it's with my dad or um, a friend, it's just such a nice way to connect with them. It's such an intimate um, situation to be sitting this close to someone in a car. Um, so I hope it's an album that people want to listen to in the car with with their friends or someone they're dating or um, and hopefully that some people want to come see me live this summer and experience it because we we've, we've built a gas station on stage so i'm going to like bring people really bring people into the the yeah the joyride world i love that yeah as a stage is there a car on stage as well are you going to arrive in on a car or oh that was too expensive unfortunately but okay fair yeah <laughs> And do you hope, seeing as you mentioned there, like two hands and first to goal being a bit more cheeky, do you hope that like, what if like two people fall in love that they first met listening to the to these songs at a festival? Because a festival is a real place to meet strangers at compared yeah, to like headline shows. Yeah, that's true. That would be amazing. I actually have um, a fan or two fans that went to one of my shows. This is a long time ago, but they met at my show um, because they were, they, uh, uh, what is it called? Like they had eye contact when they yeah. were singing along to Hurt So Good, which is a, an old song of mine. Um, and they're now married. Married. Uh, oh my God. So I hope that happens uh, this summer with one of the new songs as well. That'd be great. If, if some people fall in love at like your festival set, you have to sing at the wedding. I have to, yeah. You have to meet them in person and you have to go sing at the wedding. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for your time and talking about the new album. Um, can't wait to, I suppose, I'll see the shows on the internet because as of right now, there isn't an Irish date, but no. I'm hoping that there'll be a festival that lines up with my schedule one of the days and get to see all the the songs live but i'm sure audiences across europe are gonna love it and best of luck with the album can't wait for everyone to enjoy it thanks astrid s for coming thank on to so lame much. heart this was so lovely thank you